I want to talk a little bit about uh, about how this works in Britain. If I've if I've got um, another five minutes, um, I, I have. That's great. Um, because um, as far as I'm concerned, the Obama campaign was fantastic and it's very useful, and it's great that he's president. But we need to learn the lessons and, and use them both in Britain and around the world. And the numbers that we're talking about, half a billion dollars and 30 million people on an email list and a billion emails being sent out, it can be a bit daunting. It can, be a, it can make us think that some of this stuff is uh, you know, really tourism and it won't happen, it won't happen here. But the, the principles and the, and, the, and the lessons that we can take from the Obama <coughs> campaign um, can, have already been put in place in Britain over the last few years and can be used by organisations and politicians and other organisations um, um, going forward. So just some lessons. Um, accessibility, lowering the barriers to entry, making it very, very simple for people to join in. To join an event, you only need your postcode. You don't need to go past any password protected firewalls or have a, a know about a secret URL or have the phone number of a branch secretary. All you needed was a, was a postcode and you could join in. Um, anybody could take action in terms, uh, anyone could take action regardless of the amount of um, investment they could make. If it was $5, that was fine. If they could only write a letter to the local newspaper, they could do that. If they wanted to come offline and do one event, they could. If they wanted to do 10 events, they could. If they wanted to do 10 events and then become a precinct captain, they could do that too. The, the structure of the organization was such that um, uh, anybody from, from five minutes of involvement through to quitting a job and doing three months of, of campaigning um, was there. And also the ability on behalf of the campaign to let go and, and trust the supporters to take action uh, uh, to, and to manage the campaign themselves. Um, parties in this country don't even trust their supporters enough to allow them unfettered access to their events, um, let alone um, to control and set up their own events. Um, in the States, they went to the extent that, that volunteers were given access to data so they could make the contacts themselves. In some states, in some of the primaries, they were given access to manage the data so that they could give out sections of data to other volunteers. Um, and there is a, there is a, uh, uh, what's, the, what's the phrase? There's a, there's a judgment to be made on each of these things. Data protection laws are, are very, very, very different in this country than they are in, in the States. But they're having the confidence to let us go of some of that control. So can it work in Britain? Uh, I, this is, I know we're a bit beyond the far show, but um, not, not the far show, Little Britain, but um, uh, it can work. And I want to give you one example. I know that other speakers uh, here tonight are going to give some other examples. Um, and I think they're going to give you some fantastic examples because a lot of this stuff has been put in place in the UK al already and across the world, um, and so it's been shown to work. But I want to give you the example of Ken Livingston's campaign because if you compare the level of engagement and the level of involvement on Ken's campaign to the level of engagement and the ratios of engagement on Obama's campaign, it's not a whole lot different. When parties are, uh, are, are, are willing or forced to, uh, in this case, um, take off the leash a little bit and, and involve people and, and let go a little, um, then it works just the same. So Ken's campaign, three month email program, very, very limited. Uh, very, very um, lowly resourced. I was the only person working on the on the online campaign. We had an email list of just 8,000. But from those people, we got 25,000 pounds raised in three months from over 1,000 people. Uh, 1,500 volunteers coming through an events tool that meant you didn't have to be a party member, you didn't have to even be a party supporter. In some cases, they were people who weren't even going to vote for the party. They were just going to vote for the mayoral candidate. Um, coming in through the website, only having to give their postcode, not having to sign up for anything else other than the event they were going to um, attend, um, and a, a huge a kind of um, upsurge in, in well, voluntary. Just recap some of the some of the tactics and the some of the um, uh, key points from the from the campaign. Uh, I mean, I've put up here about website and advertising and, and offline. I just really want to hammer home a point about email. Email is the, is the foundation of online campaigning. Websites aren't the foundation of online campaigning, nor are blogs, nor is Twitter, nor is Facebook. Those all have a role to play. They're useful. Uh, websites is where you, where you kind of, the foundation on which you get people to do stuff. But the way in which you incentivize people, the, 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 the kind of the fire hose in which you direct your supporters at a particular um, action or event is email. 
um, and emails need to be uh, worded interestingly, uh, they need to be <coughs> timely, they need to be focused and they need to um, get people to click on the link and take the action. And just two examples, I, I haven't been able to put them in this presentation, but two examples last week of, of where emails goes wrong. The Labour Party and the Conservative Party emailed on Wednesday, uh, the Conservative Party about the resignation of James Crosby, the Labour Party about unemployment going up. I, I don't know why the Labour Party would want to email people about unemployment going up, but um, they did. In both of those emails, the only link in both of those emails was unsubscribe. If you wanted to click on the email, the only thing to click on was unsubscribe or delete. There was no action for anybody to take. There was no incentive for them to take action. There was nothing interesting for them to do. It was a, it was a pure transmit. <coughs> it was a reworded press release. Um, and reworded not very very well. So, um, using regular emails, a uh, weekly basis, even more with uh, uh, Obama's campaign, sustaining engagement, getting people to forward emails to their friends, to forward videos to their friends, to donate, to ask their friends to donate, to join events, to tell their friends they've joined events, to tell, uh, the, uh, to write on their blogs that they've joined events, um, to help the campaign with press engagements, uh, etc etc the list is absolutely endless um, and if you think about the range of activities that people would have um, uh, in any given campaign all of those have an online um, uh, element to them. And, and in terms of bringing the online and the last point I would make bringing the online and the offline together and using online um, uh, campaigning to organize your supporters and bring your supporters in I would just think about it think about it in this way if you're running a campaign and 100 people turn up to join you uh, in, a, in an activity, what are you going to get them to do? What would they do offline? How would you get those people into a room? And what would you have for them when they get there? And that's exactly how any, any individual uh, online uh, campaign activity goes. How are you trying to get people into the room? How are you getting people to try and work, click on your website? When they're, when they're in your room, what are you going to ask them to do? When, they're, when, they've, when they've clicked uh, on your email, what are you trying to get them to do? So both in terms of um, giving them something to do, incentivizing them, and making and giving them a an in. Also, what do you get out of it? What does the campaign <coughs> win from this? Uh, that's how Obama ran his email campaign. That's how he ran his um, online campaign. Um, and I think that's the lesson that we can learn in the UK. Um, just as a, a kind of a final caveat um, before we have the discussion, Obama's online campaign um, had. Um, uh, um, over uh, 30 to 40 million dollars spent on it. And they had a, a, a team of 85 people doing nothing but working on his uh, new media effort. So when we're thinking about how we can do some of this stuff here, and I experienced this as being the sole person on Ken's campaign, uh, you have to think about what's, what you can prioritize. What can you do there with one person instead of 85? And also, when you're, when you're running an online campaign and people say, <coughs> Obama did all this, why aren't we doing it too? That's your answer. They had 85 and this is just me. Thanks very much. <laughs>